Hello and welcome back to the Sports Booth YouTube channel. My name is Luke and today we're doing a special video looking into the potential Wallabies slash All Blacks XV or the Anzac XV that could take on the British and Irish Lions in 2025 like the Australian rugby is trying to come up with. So the idea, and you haven't seen the news that uh, this dropped, is that Australian rugby are planning for pre, I believe, the uh, British and Irish Lions tour of Australia to do a... A test match, a one-off test match, maybe a free match series, a one-off I think it was planned for, of a Anzac XV where we combine the All Blacks and the Wallabies versus the British and Irish Lions in the at the MCG and hopefully selling that out uh, with 90,000, you know, I guess Anzacs uh, in the crowd. So I thought today let's let's go if, if this if this idea had come about, you know, a year ago and we were sitting here today and deciding that, you know, the British and Irish Lions were touring, who would we select and and pick from both the nations? Now, we're looking over like this past year, the current form, we're not counting any injuries. So what I'm going to be doing today is selecting a 23. Anyone who's currently injured, we're going to remove those injuries and say they're, they're fit to play. So everyone's available, everyone is fit, running, and ready to go. I am an All Blacks fan. I'm an All Blacks fan. But if you've listened to one of our podcasts or jumped on one of those videos before with me and my partner in crime, Husey, he's a massive Wallabies fan. So for the past six months, I've had to sit in there and hear about how great his Wallabies are when, you know, I know I know the truth behind it after 20-odd years of uh, Blair's like Cup victories. But saying that, I'm going to try and be as fair as possible. Obviously, everyone's got their own opinions, but I feel like I've selected the best 23 that we can find from the All Blacks and Australia combined. Let's start off with the front row. In number one, I've gone Ethan De Groot. I think it was criminal he was left out of that Irish series. He's now showing the force he is, and the force he will be going forward. At number two, it is Samasoni Tokihau, just dominant for the All Blacks. You know, he's in the past year taken that number two jersey off Cody Taylor and Dan Coles deserve it. So two All Blacks to start us off. Australian gets chucked in there. Alan Alatoa is who I'm going for for my number three. Now, again, he's... He's had a good season. I probably wouldn't say it's been his best ever, but he's he's had a very good season. I like that as a front row, a really strong front row. My two locks, we're going with a combination that is that will be that what, probably one of the better ever locking combinations you'll see. Samuel Whitelock, Brody Retallick, two of the All Blacks, boom, in there. The loose forward trio where, is where it gets really interesting. Obviously, we've got Hooper and Sam Kane battling for the seven. What I've chosen to do is put Rob Valentini at six, moving from eight to six, and then I've got Michael Hooper at seven and Artie Sevilla, obviously, at eight. Why I've done that is I think Artie is a good enough threat at the line-out that he'll be our third option. Although, yeah, we lose a little bit because we don't have a, a, a proper one there. I think what Artie can do at the line-out, I'm happy with. Um, and the same with uh, Valentini if we have to throw him up. But I think Artie would be that, that third jumper in my mind. He's an athlete enough that we can get him up there. So that's our forward pack. It's a free five split, obviously, with uh, three Wallabies and five All Blacks. But I think that's a really strong forward pack to build off. Now let's go into this back line. Now, there's probably a, there's a, there's a couple of really tough choices, and the outside back is are the hardest. But let's start with our 19 combo. I've gone with Aaron Smith and Richie Moonga. We know who they are. We know what they do. That's the two I've gone for. People argue, yes, Bowden Barrett over uh, Richie Moonga. I, I, I get that argument. Um, they say Richie hasn't won big games. So the Crusaders he has... All Blacks, yeah, he's he's there thereabouts. So I've gone with those two. In the centres, I think this would be the most dynamic and, I guess, game-breaking centre duo in the world. I've gone with Karevi and Riko Iwani. I just think those two would break games open like it's nothing, like it's no man's business. Those two, dominant force in the centres. On the wings, it's really tough. I've gone Kodabiti at 11. I've gone Will Jordan at 14. And at the back, I've gone Geordie Barrett. He, leaving Callaway out was pretty hard. Leaving Caleb Clark out, really hard as well. So that's my back line. Nine, Smith. Ten, Moonga. Twelve, Karevi. Thirteen, Ioani. On the wings, we've got Kotobete and Jordan. And then at fullback, Barrett. Geordie, to be precise. So when we look at the back line now, we've got a 2-5 split of Wallabies versus All Blacks to give us a 10-5 starting split of All Blacks versus Wallabies, which I think is right. Where, where we are right now, I think that's a that's a good a good amount of of each um, to to have some really good combos there. I think each player brings a talent that can be used in in a game against the British and Irish Lions team. Let's move on to the bench now. For my 
front row reserves. It's it's going to be interesting. And I'm I'm going to imagine. I'm going to. This is where people are going to argue. But I think this is the best. Where the the best between the two teams. And there's going to be some arguments. And I understand it. I get it. But I've gone Dave Pricky as the reserve hooker. I've then gone James Slipper and Tali Alatupo as our reserve props. Now. That James Slipper one, you've got Angus Bell, who's right there as well. I think if he had played a bit more footy for Australia, the way he was playing for the Waratahs, unreal. And then you've got other All Blacks, and I understand it, I get it. But I've, I've gone with those decisions there, and I think Taniello Supo, you're just stupid to leave him out. Although he hasn't had the best season, he's a game changer. I think in that in that group, he, he becomes a dominant force and takes another step up. So that's an All-Australian you know, reserve front row, which I think is all right. In the reserve lock, I've gone with Scott Barrett. I think the opportunity that he can also play six helps us out um, because I think that, yeah, the, the locks in Australia, we all kind of know they're unfortunately probably not at the standard of the All Blacks locks, and I think it's there's, that's a no-brainer that those three All Black locks get into this team. The reserve loose forward or the number 20 is a tough one, um, and I know that I'll probably get a bit of stick for this. I haven't gone Sam Kane. I haven't gone Dalton Popper lately. I've gone with Pete Samu, and... People will say, oh, you know, he's is he that good? The way he played against the All Blacks, I think, and in, 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 in all of the uh, rugby championship shows he deserves a spot and he can bring something to this game off that bench. I think he can come on at eight or come on at six. Um, even if we had to take off Hooper, he's come on at seven and done the job. We can move Artie around. I just think that gives us a lot of dynamic pieces uh, there. And with Scott Barrett able to play lock or six, we could, we could theoretically take six and seven off and still have a really good locking duo, still, you know, play 80 minutes. So I, I went with that. I think that that makes the team more well-rounded, and I think it really benefits the team there. The back reserves, now there was one easy one, Bowden Barrett, I'm going to get it out of the way. He's in my number 23 jersey. Can come on, play fullback, can come on, play 10. Makes life easier. If he plays fullback, we can move Geordie Barrett around. The number 22 was really hard because we could go winger here, um, but I thought, like, if in doubt of an injury on the wing, say Cordobetti or Jordan went down, Jordy Barrett can move out to the wing as well, and then Bowden Barrett go in there. So I wasn't too worried about it. Ricky Ioane is obviously a world-class winger as well, so we could, you know, move Jordy into their career. There's, there's lots of options we could do with that. I wasn't too worried about wing. So Callaway and Clark missed out. What I thought was we need a centre reserve, um, and that was really tough. I was like, okay, well, Icky a very, very good player, deserved uh, but then there was one name that stood out who hasn't had a big year because of injury, and I went into Anton Leonard Brown is the man here. He's a level above when he's playing, and he lifts a team up that I don't think we've quite seen yet. So I've gone with it, Leonard Brown. He can play 12 or 13, and again, if a wing goes down, I think we can push Ioani out if need be. So that's that's where I've gone for those two back reserves. Now the half back reserve was probably the hardest, hardest pick of the team because you've got Christy, you've got uh, obviously Fakatava, who's not who's injured at the moment, but we're not counting injuries. Then you've got Nick White, McDermott, and Jake Gordon. So I kind of, I looked at the team and I saw Nick White was probably the name that stuck out the most, but I actually went with McDermott and, and based off his game, and I think off the bench, well, 20 minutes to go, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to go, McDermott's going to be the one who's going to make the biggest spark for me. So that's why I went with McDermott. Now, to leave out Nick White, I understand it's pretty harsh because I think he's had a fantastic season. I just think that McDermott, takes that step and takes that brings that spark off the bench is a different type to what a Nick White Aaron Smith are who are game managers got great box kicks what uh, McDermott's a runner and you can tell it when he gets going he's fantastic so I went I went with that package I just felt like that combo was better so in the reserves we have a 5-3 Australian split so five Wallabies to three All Blacks giving us a total of 13 All Blacks to 10 Wallabies in the combined XV and I think this Suits, and I think this is as fair as it can be while also giving us a, a very talented team. Probably the best team in the world. I think this team honestly beats the British and Irish Lions. Like they, I think they really do. I, I don't see the British and Irish Lions being able to beat this team. As good as, you know, England, as good as Ireland are at the, mo uh, at the moment with a couple of Welsh and Scottish talents in there, I don't see this team being beat. Now, of course, feel free to disagree with me. I'd love for you to disagree with me. Let me know your thoughts. Who missed out? Should I have gone Nick White over McDermott? Does Pete Samu deserve a spot? Should Bowden Barrett should be the 10? And Callaway be the fullback? Is our front row up to scratch? I want to hear all of that from you. So let me know what you think of this squad and the team that I've named. For now, thank you for joining me. Uh, I will be back again very shortly doing a roundup of all of the Autumn Nation Series games that have happened over the weekends. But for now, thank you. We'll see you later.
Bye.